work on a lot of different things. Um, if you ever want to find me on Twitter or the web, there's my contact info. Um, so all this project started out as a text from my friend. This is this is the text I got. It said, "You, me, fantasy football with a question mark." Um, he is not a football guy. He's a hockey guy. So I knew that he wasn't asking me to um, join his league or anything. He wanted to work on something. Um, he actually works for a small startup up in Dayton that works on like sports statistics and um, just optimizing everything around sports venues and stuff like that. So I knew it probably had was a gig. Um, so when I got there, day one, um, he showed me this app that some smart guy with a he was in the military for a long time in operations research. He's like a stats geek. He had written something in Python that was actually like compiled into an EXE. And um, it was a, oh, it would help if I actually started my Windows environment. Hold on. Um, it was a, it was an EXE. Let's come back. Um, and as soon as Parallels boots up, I'll actually show it to you. But what it is is, um, I guess there was some competition where um, I think it was on DraftKings or something where you got so much money every week and um, you had to pick players and if whoever whoever had the best lineup as far as points and stuff um, every week uh, you know they were ranking and there was actually a prize so he actually wrote this app um, where it tries pretty much every single permutation of every single player um, to see who would be the most optimal would be the most optimal lineup um, let me see if I, that would help if I actually picked the button. I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. But, um, so the next question became, can we make this run on the web? Um, that's where my, my buddy got into this and they took this out to a consulting company, um, went through all the details. They, they came back with a number like, okay, that'll take like a year, like 2,000 hours to get that up and running, the, basically the equivalent. Um, so my friend was like, well, how about this? You give me and my friend one week, and we'll get as far down the road as possible and, um, you know, see if we can beat that 2,000 hours. So um, the app is actually a lot more complicated than what it looks like on the from the surface. You know, his little Python EXE, it just ran on an individual's computer, so you didn't have to worry about web scale or uh, spiking CPUs or anything. Uh, but on the web, you can't just run a CPU-intensive task on your web server. Um, you would just bring everything to a crawl. So we actually put this out to Azure, um, which is Microsoft's web, and basically whenever someone clicks the button, um, it hits our web server, puts a message on a message queue, it starts up a worker role in Azure, um, which actually runs that Python code, the same code. We didn't touch his optimization code. Um, we added hooks into it. So every it tries every permutation. Every time it finds a new permutation that's better, it kicks off a, a message to a, a queue, which then the web server picks up, and then we're using web sockets to um, communicate back and forth between the client and the web server. And so then it shows the user the new optimal lineup. Um, move the, all this out to the cloud because you know we can we can spin up those boxes in a flash and it's like two cents an hour to run them um, and it doesn't kill our web servers and then we can just scale out to everything. Um, let's see if this is actually up and running now. Okay, so this is the original app and you can remove people. You can like whitelist them, add to roster. And then you hit the button, and it it's actually already done, I think, because I let me clear the lineup. You can see it just flashes real fast. So that's the EXE. So when I got there day one, my friend on his spare time over the weekend had already started working on this. He had Bootstrap in the application. It was all jQuery because um, he didn't know Angular or Ember or anything. Um, so it started out as jQuery and handlebars. Um, and then that worked fine for a little while until, let me 
drag this over here. Until I started doing things like call, because basically I was just pulling data and then running it through handlebars to generate some HTML. That worked fine until I was like scraping the DOM to get information. Um, just all the little things that you do with jQuery where it starts off awesome at the beginning, but then once the application grows a little bit, you're like, okay, this is getting stupid. So I actually had a redraw function where I was redrawing kind of all the panes. And like the second or third time I wrote that, I'm like, yeah, I need to refactor this. So, so on the third day, jQuery was refactored to Angular. Um, so I, I took the application, basically, um, this is it, it's really bootstrappy, but it looks better than if I had designed it. Um, basically just made all the different little components a controller. Um, basically just kept, I have a shared service that I share between all the controllers that holds the roster data and it holds um, all the available players, um, the positions. And that's it for the for that. Now let me actually pull up the app and then show it to you guys. I hate Macs sometimes. On my old Mac, I had a little extension where it you hit the green button and it actually does the same thing it does in Windows. Um, okay, so this is the app. You can, uh, this is the rosters on the right hand side, all the available players are on the left. You can see they have a salary, they have a points, all this stuff's like hard coded from the database. Um, the eventual goal will be to, you can put in your own numbers here. Um, you can whitelist people, so if you really like, you know, LaShawn McCoy, you can say no matter what the optimal is, oh, it's server starting up. Um, no matter what the optimal is, I want LaShawn, LaShawn McCoy no matter what. Um, you can also blacklist people, so if you really don't like DeMarco Murray, you can say I don't like him. Um, and then when you hit the button, it sends all this information, you know, all the information just sitting there in, in JSON objects, sends it up to the server and does the whole dance with the Python and everything like that. Um, I really wish I could show it, show you working it working completely back, all the way back and then forward. Unfortunately, Azure, some of the Azure stuff isn't working right now. Um, so I actually mocked it out what the reply would be. It would help if I put this over here. I need to just mirror this probably instead of trying to put this stuff over. Um, Yes. So I, I can kind of picture them wanting to do this as a standalone app that, you know, someone's going to go ahead and they're trying to maximize this and the guy did it on his own. Was this an app that they're going to sell? If it now yeah. Can, they sell the app individually? And um, it's going to be, um, if you've ever, if you do a lot of fancy football, you yeah. probably know who FF Toolbox is. Um, this will be part of their premium content hopefully soon. Um, they're shooting for this year. Um, so what I did was to simulate the server sending back information. Um, I just wrote a set interval, and if 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 it's set to generate the roster, it just picks a position at random, picks a player at random, and just passes back. It pretends like we got a new optimal lineup. Um, like I said, kind of I wish I could show you the whole app running. Um, he's still working on it all the Azure parts. So I was responsible for all this stuff from, it's running web API and .NET. I was responsible for all that stuff going forward. So um, web API, SignalR, Angular, um, anything on the front end. Um, so here's my shared service. By the way, you don't want to learn Angular from me. So I've, I've, I've been learning Angular, I feel like, for two years now. But I'm, this is the first time I've gotten paid to actually do it. So it's very plain vanilla, very 101-y. Um, so yeah, don't copy my code, please. <laughs> um, so I have a shared service. That's where all my data goes. 
Um, so I'm keeping things like the, the roster, um, the available positions. I have some common functions like find for finding players, for finding roster positions. Um, and then you can see some remnants of jQuery still in here. So I'm using jQuery's promises library um, to load data. So whenever the service gets instantiated, it actually calls this, uh, some APIs to get all available players and get the current user's whitelist roster. Because um, when you whitelist people, it actually saves it to the database. And then when you reload the app, it's there. Um, and then I have controllers. So um, position picker, that's the, actually, I probably should actually show you. Yeah. Um, so th this is the position picker controller. So when you click on one of these, it it switches who um, who's showing. You can sort all these columns. Are you using like ng grid or something? Or? No, I, I wrote it. Um, I wrote it myself. Okay. Um, Could have saved you now. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. So when you only have 40 hours, yeah. it's kind of hard. To, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff I'd like to go back through and clean up. Um, but yeah, when you have 40 hours, you don't really worry about a lot of that stuff. It's kind of a spike. Yeah. Um, and so that's the mentality I took. Um, so yeah, position picker, when you when you click on one of those, it, it sets the active position to whatever you clicked on. Um, the available players controller is this, this kind of grid right here. Um, you know, it has... Yeah, see, th th this is my columns stuff right here. So instead of using something like that, I, I just I have all my columns as a an array, and I have um, events that fire when you click on one that sorts it up or down. Um, let's see, yeah, right here. So this is my repeat for available players. So for each player in the shared data dot available players, I'm ordering by sort column and sort descending and then filtering by the position name. Um, and then when you click on one of those headers, when you click, it's sorting. It's just setting those two properties. So property and ascending. When you click on it, it reverses it. So it actually wasn't, to write all that stuff in like jQuery and stuff like that, it, it took a while. And there, I started using a plugin for jQuery and then I had to rip that out when I refactored to Angular because it didn't work at all. Um, I think, I forget what it was called, but I saw it and then I started writing my own. Um, it, it's amazing how little time it took to do all this stuff. That's kind of what the appeal of Angular is, is all this stuff that's really complex. I mean, it's like one line here. I'm, I'm you know, for each uh, an array, I'm ordering and I'm filtering by position name. Like, and it just magically works. Um, let me see what else I have here. So you, you have 40 hours. 40 hours. And you got, you got through what you needed to? Or? Yeah, they're very impressed by what they see so far, and so it'll probably lead to additional work. Was um, this last week? Or? This was like four weeks ago. Okay. Did you get business? Uh, I'm hoping. Um, they're, they're taking this now and selling it. And then as soon as they sell it, I'm probably going to be pulled back in. So this is one of the parts that's cool about being a freelancer is you never know kind of <laughs> what's going to pop up and when it pops up. Um, so also I think Dale mentioned the Angular docs. So they're, they're really great. So when I was going through this, I constantly was going back to the Angular docs. I wish it had more examples at times. That's one thing I'm like, if they they really really need to up the number of examples because I would constantly go to the docs and then I would have to go Stack Overflow or something Google search and figure out why something wasn't working. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I had. So it was a really fun application. Um, you know, getting paid to work on fantasy football stuff is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So if you haven't done Angular, I definitely would recommend it. Oh, what's SignalR? SignalR is Microsoft's uh, WebSockets stuff. Oh, okay. So it's just WebSockets back and forth. They try to package that up and make it easier. 
but like typical things, it's like, why is this hard? It shouldn't be hard. <laughs> so, I have a love-hate relationship with Microsoft. Uh, I'm going to ask another application question about okay. this. So the, it seems like the only data that the person's providing is the thumbs up or thumbs down, whether they really want the guy or yeah. they really don't want the guy. And all the other data is available to everybody that <coughs> in the league. Yeah. So I'm trying to understand, like, if you, if like everyone here was all in the same league, yeah, and we all had access to the same tool, <laughs> how does that? Yeah, you know, and you it. Been, huh? Who runs the tool first? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like. You're obviously yeah. not an addictive but, gambler. But, you're obviously not an addictive gambler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement of, of doing but, of the thing, not whether or not you want to uh, win. Yeah, most likely yeah. not everybody in the league will have it. But um, okay. you can also use, like I said, eventually when this gets sold and we have to refactor it, you could, you'll be able to enter in your own numbers for the, some of this stuff. Okay. Um, so it'll be a little bit more customizable. So we were just mostly focusing on general... You know, does this work, and 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 whether it'll scale? Um, yep. Is the data that that uh, Python app uh, works with is that publicly available, or is that like a proprietary? It's proprietary. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and actually, we're passing it just JSON directly to the. So all this stuff gets bundled up. Um, even all the available players, even though that's kind of static data right now, um, the um, Python app doesn't know it's static. It's just the Python app is getting all the available players, all their stats, your whitelist, your blacklist, and it's just sending it all over, and then it optimizes <coughs> it. So all that part is ready um, for all the customizations, but the front end just doesn't support it yet. So it was a fun project. I liked it. Very cool.